In the past, Dante Barksdale spent very little time with his mother and his nieces. Instead, he was out on the streets. Barksdale grew up in a housing project in Baltimore with poverty, violence, and crime. To be tough, you had to fight or, you know, have a big gun, you know, to be successful. You know, we thought that, you know, all right, look, there's nobody here that's a lawyer or a doctor or, you know, nothing like that. So I guess our occupation is either I'm going to be either a drug addict, <laughs> a stick-up artist, I'm going to be a drug dealer. I think that was... Barksdale started selling drugs. For his mother, it was very hard raising five children by herself with hardly any money. They learned things, you know, other than my teachings. And they had choices to make, and a lot of times they made bad choices to make. Well, he said it was survival choices, which I can agree with. Uh, they wanted more things that I couldn't provide. Baltimore is one of the poorest cities in the U.S., with one of the highest crime and murder rates. Barksdale himself was arrested several times. He spent more than eight years in prison. I realized that it wasn't like I was when I was young. I wasn't going to prison and just leaving my mother and my sisters. Now I'm going to leave my children and my wife. So I thought about that, and when I thought about that, God, for some reason, sent about five people to me talking about the Safe Streets program and how I could get involved. Today, Barksdale is an outreach coordinator at the anti-violence organization Safe Streets. It's Friday afternoon. The 41-year-old is meeting with his colleagues. The shift has just started, and they talk about recent violent incidents. Her mother, her mother owes somebody some money down here. Oh, OK. Her mother lives down here. If something happens, local residents call them, and they collect the information. This is what you call our war room. Our war room is how we track incidents going on into the community. These yellow dots are incidents that took place. And it could have been a rape, it could have been an aggravated assault, it could have been common assault, it could have been robbery. The blue dots are non-fatal shootings, the red ones, fatal ones. How we do briefings and stuff. The greens that you see are actual conflict mediations. Gotta move the bike. Move the line. That's a crucial part of their job. Being around and mediating conflicts in one of the most violent neighborhoods in Baltimore. What, about two days ago? Yeah, about two days ago. I had a homicide cross on the field over there. Young man was actually working. I got difficulties dealing with death, you know what I'm saying? Seeing death every day. Death is, you know what I'm saying? It shouldn't be normal. It's like right now, we so immune to it, it's like a, a normal thing. <laughs> so they reach out to high-risk youth. I gave up like always. The outreach workers are spending time in the neighborhood during those hours when violence is more likely to be committed. They're not interested in drug dealing. They're only here to spread one message. Don't shoot anybody. Think about your future. I mean, like, far as like me trying to get myself together for my kids, try to better my life for myself. So he helped me a lot with that. He's like a, more like a big brother to everybody. The outreach workers are able to win the trust of the community because they've lived similar lives to many here. In the communities where they do outreach work, homicides have decreased significantly. But Safe Streets hasn't gotten enough funding from the city to expand the program to more neighborhoods, despite the fact that in 2015, the murder rate is higher than it's been for years. In the first half of the year, 156 people were killed. One reason, poverty. It's more like a, a holistic approach that needs to be taken, you know, like, the communities need education. The, the communities need training. The communities need employment. The, the kids need to be taught life skills. Dante Barksdale tries to be a role model. Hello, girls. Hello. 
He and his wife always tell their daughter to get a college degree. Just two weeks ago at 41, he finally finished college himself. He went to prison right after high school. So by getting his degree in human services, Dante Barksdale has fulfilled one of his dreams.